it's Denise and I've got a new five quart cast iron brazier that I want to try out. So I thought I would share it with you by doing an unboxing and then making a meal in it. So if you want to see what I've got going on, keep watching. Welcome to This and That with Denise Jordan. I teach women to make wise home health and beauty decisions. So if you want to learn more about running a household, subscribe. Or if you want to see reviews about products that can benefit you in your home, subscribe because I do videos on those topics all the time. So hit that subscribe button and double tap that little bell icon so you don't miss any upcoming videos, but definitely check out the show notes in the description box below because that's where I'll link my favorite housekeeping and gardening solutions. Okay, let's jump into it. I got a new cast iron brazier for Christmas and I've been just waiting for the perfect opportunity to try it out. And Stephanie at Creative Miss Me and Wani at Wani's house have issued a challenge and it is the one pot cooking challenge. So I thought, hmm, can I make a meal and cook everything in this one pot? And I thought, I think I can do that. And I think that this new puppy is the perfect thing to try it with. I got this as a Christmas gift and I've just, like I said, I've been waiting to try it out. So let me let you take a look at it first. Let's do an unboxing. So it is a Crofton cast iron brazier and it's five quarts. And it's in kind of a, a, a gray color. But I love this color. For me, this is kind of a neutral. So even though I have red cookware, this will be perfect sitting on my stove. And I love the stainless steel top. This little top or knob, I should say, this on it will be perfect in the oven. I don't have to worry about it melting or anything like that. And when you look at the lid, it's got like a self-basting lid. So these little beads in here, in between the little like smooth enamel, um, somehow self-based, whatever I've got in there. So there's that. And I also like the feel of the cast iron right here. I don't know, I just think that color contrast is just nice. So this is the lid. And here is the base. Now look at that, a beautiful enamel interior. Just loving that. And then when you look at the coloring on it, you can see where there's just a little bit of shading. It goes from a lighter to a darker gray as it goes to the bottom. And then when you look at the back of it or the base of it, it's a nice smooth enamel. So I'm really pleased with that. So, um, for those of you that follow me know that I have not let my husband use his cast iron skillets anymore because they scratch up the top of my glass top stove. So I'm thinking that because this has a smooth enamel finish, that won't be a problem. But trust me, I will be evaluating that because if it puts a, even one little scratch on the stove top, I won't be using it again. So let's just see how that works. So. I'm really pleased with what I see so far. It has a nice heft to it. This thing is heavy. And then the handles are like, I don't know, uh, it's, it's like they're one piece, they're not attached. Let's see what they say about that. Integrated cast handles. So the handles are integrated. They're not like screwed on. So the handles are integrated. I already mentioned the oven safe stainless steel knob and the self basting top. And let's see if there's anything else in particular that I should mention. 
says it's superior heat retention and distribution, long lasting porcelain enamel finish, and I will be evaluating that. And it's oven safe up to 400 degrees. And I rarely cook anything higher than 400 degrees, so I'm ready to try it out. So I am going to be making a sirloin steak in this brazier, and we'll see how things turn out. So let's get it started. I always like to wash my cookware before I use it for the first time. I'm going to turn the burner on medium heat. Sit it on the stove and I'm going to add two tablespoons of olive oil. And I'm going to just brush that all over the bottom of the pan. Now I'm going to cook these two sirloin tip steaks. I've had them in the freezer for a while and as I work through Lisa Sutton at Sutton's Days Pantry Challenge, using up food you have in your freezer or in your refrigerator in your pantry, rotating items, I thought I better get these out and get them cooked up because I've had them in there for a while. And I'm just going to brown them in the pan on both sides with a little onion, salt and pepper, and then add some veggies like carrots, potatoes, onions, and celery, and then just let it cook all in the one pot. While the pan's heating up, I'm going to sprinkle some of this Trader Joe 21 seasoning salute on them. I'm trying to avoid using salt in so much of the things that I cook. So I'm going to go with this 21 seasoning salute and I will pierce each of the steaks and now I'm going to put them in the pot and let them brown. Flip this one over since it's browned nicely already. Get that one browned. Now I'm going to get these out and then layer the bottom of the pan with some onions and carrots and put these back in on top. So let's get that started. So now I'll slice these onions. Let me take these over to the pot and drop them in. I'll drop in a little of the celery, some roughly chopped carrot, and a few potatoes. Now we'll put the steaks back in. I like to have the steaks sitting on top of the veggies, so if anything scorches or sticks, It'll be the vegetables and not the steaks. Now I'm going to add a cup, well, two cups of beef broth, a quarter cup of Worcestershire sauce. I'm gonna make sure that's kinda all mixed around in there. And I'll put the rest of the vegetables on top of the steaks. More onions more potatoes, the rest of the celery, and in this particular dish I don't mind using the greens on the celery, and the rest of the carrots. And I'll also sprinkle it with a little thyme. Now I'm going to put the lid on 
and let it simmer until the juices kind of come to just a little bit of a bubble and then I'm going to put it in the oven for a couple of hours. And then one thing that probably could have made it a little easier was when I put in the Worcestershire sauce and the um, beef broth. I could have put the Worcestershire sauce in the container with the beef broth, but I just wasn't paying attention right then. So that'll make it a little easier if you decide to try this dish. So it sounds like it's bubbling nicely, and it is. So I'll just make sure to... spoon just a little bit of the fluid over the veggies now I'll put it in the oven for the next two hours So while that's in the oven, let me take this opportunity to thank Stephanie at Creative Miss Me with Stephanie and Wani at Wani's house for hosting this challenge. I don't know about you, but I always love one pot meals. It just seems to make the cooking and the cleanup so much easier. So thank you guys for bringing this challenge to us and it works out perfectly for what I had planned to have for dinner today. If you're not familiar with uh, Stephanie at Creative Miss Me or with Wani at Wani's House. I will link their channels below so that you can check them out. I'll also link the playlist when it's available so that you can see what are some of the other amazing one pot meals people have been able to come up with. So I'm going to go ahead with my cleanup and I'll check in with you again in a little bit. Let's get this out of the oven. Oh my, doesn't that look amazing? Now let's get the gravy on it. Hang on. I'm going to take about 10 ounces of hot water, pour in one pack of brown gravy mix. Give that a little stir. And now I'll pour this gravy mixture all over our beef, potatoes, and carrots, and celery. And I'll put it back in the oven for about 20 minutes. That should be plenty of time for that gravy to thicken up. And then my meal will be ready to serve. Yep, that looks pretty darn good and it's ready. So I'll go ahead and get this out of the oven. So here's my one pot meal and here you can see my sirloin tip steaks. There's one, two, three of those in there. I've got the carrots and the potatoes, the little onions and celery. Everything we need for dinner is right in there. So now I'm going to let this sit on the stove probably for about 10 or 15 minutes so that it could just kind of the gravy can thicken and then I'll get it to the table. So now here's my question for you. What's your go-to when you want to do a one pot meal? Tell me in the comment section below. And just so you know I've raised three children. I've managed a home for more than 45 years and I am a nurse by profession. So if you want to learn more about running a household cooking and cleaning and laundry and health and beauty, subscribe. I would love to have you as a member of the TNT community. In the meantime, this is Denise Jordan saying goodbye. I'll see you in the next video. And before I go, I'll make sure to add something on the very end to show you how easily this pot washes up or not. Because I did want to do a review of this pot as well. So I'll make sure that is on the end of the video. So stay tuned for the end so you can see that piece. And doesn't this look simply delicious?
So now let's see how easy the cleanup is. This is what it looks like. And this thing is heavy as heck. This is what the lid looks like. And again, it's very heavy. So let's put it down in the sink. We'll add a little dishwashing liquid to it. And we'll see what happens. So far, so good. It looks like the food is coming off of the sides pretty easily. Let me grab the lid. Let's just get it started. Hmm. So far, so good. So the lid's coming off pretty good. So this is what the lid looks like. All the debris came off of it pretty easily. So I'm pretty pleased with that. I'll set it aside so I can dry it off. Now I'll finish cleaning this up. Well, hey. It washed up nicely. Now I'm glad I let the water sit in the bottom of it while I cleaned the lid because that allowed it to soak just a little bit, but that was all it needed. I mean, look at there. It looks pretty good. Nothing's on the sides and I hate for the sides of my pot to get grubby. So the top turned out beautifully. As did the bowl of the pan. It really washed up nicely. I didn't really have to soak it at all. I just put the water in and while I washed the sides and then washed the lids, the rest of the um, food in the pot just slid right on out. So other than the fact that it's extremely heavy, I liked it. I definitely plan on using it again when I need to do another one pot meal. And it cooked relatively quickly too. That's the thing too. Slow cookers take a long time, but this took care of it in two hours. So I'm pretty pleased. So there you have it, this Croft and cast iron brazier worked out perfect.